All right, everybody, welcome back. Bear down, and we are only three days away from free agency, and it is about to get crazy. Oof. All right, so the implications going into that, I want to discuss Jalen Johnson's contract real quick because a lot of you might not have seen the details of it, and it's pretty impactful. And last night, all of these trolls on Twitter, I'm going to call them trolls. Guys, my channel's still fairly new. It's only three months old. I'm not going to be politically correct yet. I'm going to say whatever the freak is on my sleeve. I'm going to let you guys know how I feel because there's so many people that don't understand the basics of contracts and negotiations and how things shake out for free agency, how they work for salary cap. They don't get it. So I'm going to explain it right in here. I'm going to give you the full breakdown and dosage of what this means. All right. So here's as of last night, Chicago Bears salary cap, according to Sport Track, who's very, uh, very accurate. 99% of the time. They aren't, aren't always the quickest to update it. And here's one of those examples. Jalen Johnson's contract has now been released. Right now, they're showing, as of last night, when I'm putting this together, 57556870 in cap space that we have left. And we know Ryan Poles likes to operate with about $10 million of that in reserve to go through the season in case we have emergencies, in case we have to have signings, 8 to $10 million. We ended up the year last year. You see that 2023 rollover cap by the time we were done with 4,926,000 when all was said and done. So out of that 57 million, let's say we're gonna spend about 47 million, but let's take a closer look. At the top here, you're gonna see the three things that aren't accurately reflected right now on Sport Track. There's three things. Number one, Jalen Johnson's contract is not 19,802,000. That was the tag number. They still have it listed as the tag number. The deal being done now, is a four-year, $76 million. That averages out to be $19 million, but $28 million is in the first year. Ryan Poles has front-loaded this contract. So look below at the very bottom there, $28 million year one, $16 million, $16 million, $16 million in the back years. Reasons team do, teams do that is because they see the need for salary cap later in the future, and they're going to spend it on positional players right now that they need to have locked in, and they need the contracts for, but they're going to front load it so they can afford other things later. Okay, that's huge. That's another $9 million this year. And you see the trolls on Twitter saying, oh, this just shows we're going for a young uh, quarterback. We're going, to, we're going to get Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams' contract would be more expensive than Justin Fields' contract this year with what we left. Oh, <laughs> so that's, it's funny how they twist these things. But more importantly... If we don't get more draft capital, if we don't use the draft capital we have now to trade down and get more draft picks is what I should say, because that draft capital can convert to more picks, we don't have much room left in free agency. Let me explain the next part, because there is a little more money coming our way than people don't realize with the Ryan Bates trade. So with Ryan Bates, I showed this the other day. Look right in the middle of that pre-6-1 trade. Let me zoom in on it a little bit here. All right, so right there I highlighted it, pre-6-1 trade, and I tried to verify, and we're not going to know until the league year ends or begins the new league year exactly how this contract pans out, but it appears that Buffalo is eating that $4 million in dead cap with the pre-6-1 trade. According to The Athletic, it cleared $1.4 million in cap space, sending Bates to Chicago. That's the only thing I could find on the details of this trade and how the salary cap implicates. Most places are reporting we're, we're taking on $4 million of that contract, but that's not how it appears according to his contract and the pre-6-1 trade. We're not going to know exactly what Ryan Poles uh, negotiated and how it worked out on the back end until the new league year, but it looks like we're only going to be eating one point four three three. The savings that Buffalo has, their dead cap is still going to be the 4. They're going to eat the 4, and we're going to take the one four three three million onto our contract. So it looks like we're going to be spending one point four three there. Now, the rookie class they have right now with those five picks is $14 million. But as I've talked about, if we trade down, it's going to cost a little bit more for those extra picks. It's going to cost a million or two more if we grab three or four draft picks, which Ryan Poles is going to extract some draft picks somewhere in this draft. And you're not going to get that value out of 375. It's going to be out of 1-1 or 1-9. And 1-9 doesn't have nearly the value unless you're trading down into the 20s to get some extra second and third round picks. I've, I've spoiled the whole video here. But there's no way Ryan Poles is going to be able to go into this offseason without at least trading down to two and most likely a double trade down and possibly a trade down from nine as well. That's the only way this works now. But let me show it on paper here. So here's our salary cap. 
Jalen Johnson, $20 million instead, $28 million instead of nineteen eight two. So you can see negative $8 million more. Ryan Bates, we're going to save a little bit more if that's the way it shakes out. I'm not positive that's what's happening yet. So instead of the $4 million they're reporting, it might be one four three three. That's the savings of two five six seven million. Okay, this is why you tune into this channel, guys. We're going to dissect all of this stuff. And this is the nerdy stuff you guys want to see. So you can understand what's happening as we go three days into to free agency here. The rookie draft class is going to cost us roughly $16 millions if Ryan Poles has half a brain and trades down like he needs to. He does. Spoiler, he does. Right? So that's $16 million. Those aren't calculated in that cap space yet. That's $35,925,800. So $36 million we have left. So we have roughly $25 million to $30 million to spend, and that's only giving a buffer of eleven to $6 to $11 million. So if he's going to keep that $10, $11 million buffer, that's only $25 million to spend. Tell me who we're going to pick up for $25 million. Is he going to go bargain shopping, bargain bin shopping again? Going to get us some Demarcus Walkers? Hey, I'm, I'm good with Demarcus Walker, and a lot of people don't realize that's probably who we're running with right now. As it sits right now, with the limited availability, let's go through it. Let's go through what we have right now in our needs because so many people are misconstruing what our needs are. All right, let's start on the offensive line. I put Braxton Jones as a lighter color because we need a tackle any way you slice it. Larry Borum was horrible, so we're going to need a tackle. Now, if, Larry, if, if we get a brand new tackle as a starter, that kicks Braxton Jones to the field need of Larry Borum. So that's why it's a light red because one of those can help fill the other one. Either we get a starter or we get a backup. Uh, a depth piece. We don't have a center as of right now. We've filled that backup center role, and anyone who thinks that Ryan Bates is going to be the starter is out of their freaking mind. That was the perfect backup pickup piece for a fifth round pick for a million four hundred thousand dollars that Ryan Poles could have done. It was perfect, but it wasn't for a starter spot. I absolutely feel like he is drafting a center now, whether it's in the first round by trading down from nine a little bit and getting some draft value getting Jackson Powers Johnson, which is what I prefer and what I think he's doing. Or if he's going to extract more value, he might down, trade down farther and maybe get Zach Frazier late in the first or into the early second. I don't know what Ryan Pohl's draft board looks like. None of us do. But I do know where players can fall and how much draft capital is worth. So right now we don't have a center. He's going to target that. So we're missing three pieces here. Jatiri Carter is horrible. He's absolutely terrible, and it's going to be addressed. I can guarantee you that. So there's three pieces on the line. Here is our skill positions. Two wide receivers missing. We don't have an outside receiver and we don't have a slot receiver. They're just not on the team. We don't have them. Right now, as it stands, we don't have them. And then two backup tight ends. Well, one's not necessarily a backup. When you're playing 12 personnel, you have to have a starting tight end there on the other side. So one, one starting and one backup. So we're missing four pieces on our offensive skill positions as it stands right now. We do have decent depth. And we do have decent, uh, we have an awesome wide receiver one and an awesome tight end one and a decent halfback, okay? So there's those positions. Let's go to defense. Here's our defensive line. We've got a good enough starting core. No, I don't think Demarcus Walker is the long-term solution, but with where we stand right now, he played extremely well. And I've shown that in other videos if you want to go back and look. Once Tez came in, the Tez effect really played into Demarcus Walker more than anybody else. He played extremely, he played starter worthy once Tez got here. So I don't think Ryan Poles is extremely worried about defensive end as much as our fan base is. We'd like to see an elite defensive end on both sides. I 100% agree. But the 2025 draft class is known right now as this draft class is known for the wide receivers and, and offensive line and the cornerbacks. So next year's defensive end class is supposed to be very good. All right, but we need depth. We do not have a, a backup defensive interior on this line on this team right now. Justin Jones is gone. And defensive end, Dominique Robinson was absolutely terrible. Khalid Kareem to me isn't an answer either. So that's why everyone thinks we need depth. We do need depth. But Khalid Kareem is serviceable, but he would be like Dominique Robinson is this year. He shouldn't touch the field. Dominique Robinson needs to be off the team. He was absolutely terrible. Horrible. When I broke down his metrics on my defensive end video. It's clear and obvious that he is absolutely not NFL quality. Sorry, Dominique Robinson, if you listen to this, hey, I hope the best for you, but you're not going to be on a Super Bowl caliber team. Hate to say it. All right, let's go to our secondary. Here in the back, we do not have a free safety right now. Eddie Jackson is gone, and our, our backup safety, Elijah Hicks, was absolutely terrible. You look at his PFF rank, he was 93rd out of 95. 
He had moments. He has a couple flashing moments. But other than a couple moments, he's absolutely terrible, especially in coverage. He is a liability, and he shouldn't be on the team. So we have those weaknesses there. So here's our overall weaknesses. We have 11 spots that need to be addressed. In one form or another, five of them starters. And we have five draft picks. So if you guys want to limp into this season with no depth and have problems when we have a tackle go down or a guard go down or Nate Davis have family issues or Tevin Jenkins get injured, you're going to have the same result over and over and over again. I'm not saying every player needs to be a first-round pick or every player needs to be a $13 million contract in free agency, but when you've only got $25 million to spend and let's say Xavier McKinney costs you $13 million and let's say Curtis Samuel costs you $12.5 million, well, there's two picks, there's two pieces, and then where are all these draft picks going to fill in all those holes? But we've showed on this channel very easily how you can go down from 1-1 to 1-6 and pick up four picks this year and three in additional years on top of that and go down from 1-9 to 1-12, 1-13 and pick another two picks this year up and another one next year. And all of a sudden, this team has its needs addressed. It really isn't rocket science, guys, when you really want to sit down and think about it. Ryan Poles is tipping his hand that he's going to use that draft capital to trade down let alone what he just did with, with Jalen Johnson's contract, that's what he does anyways. He extracts value. He is a master negotiator, and this is what he does. So anybody who thinks we're going to stand pat or thinks that we're going to go from 375 down and pick up a 6th and 7th rounder, we're past those days. We're past those days. We're almost through this rebuild. We're only missing certain core pieces to make this team competitive. And most of those pieces sit on the offensive side of the ball. I showed this picture on Twitter, and it is it is kind of funny. And now I don't know if we will go for a, a big name running back. You hear the rumors, and you hear about the Josh Jacobs connections, and the and the text message that was sent, and the mutual interest, and you hear about Saquon Barkley being available, and and even Tony Pollard being a cheaper option at six or seven million instead of ten or eleven million. Hey, all those things are possible, and I'm not saying we're discounted, but. You can't fill out both sides of the roster. And I posted this on Twitter, and people have seen it. But this is only possible if you trade down from one. If you trade down from one to two and then two to six, you still get Romo Dunze, and you pick up two additional second rounders and additional third by doing that. In so doing, you can pick up the Cade Stovers, the Xavier Leggett's, the Patrick Pauls, the backup of Zach Zinter, you can pick up Jackson Powers Johnson by trading down from 9 to 12 or 13, and you have that draft capital. You don't have that draft capital by sitting on 1-1 one, one alone because 1-1 one, one will extract so much more value. 1-9 down to 112, 113 is only going to pick you up a second, possibly a second and a third, depending on what you want next year in return as well because teams usually want some draft capital because that – Future draft capital usually gets a little more discount for you when you're getting it. So this is the only viable way to get the solution of what we want. Ryan Poles is tipping his hands, guys. Little things like this show the rest of the league too. And that's going to start driving that value of number one up because people, teams, GMs, they're smart. They realize what we're talking about in this video right here. They're not your guys on Twitter who don't have a clue what they're talking about and saying, this means we're going to pick a quarterback at 1-1. Other teams know what we're saying right here in this video. They understand that, and they say, oh, man, the Bears, the position they're in, they probably are trading down from 1. We're going to get our, we're going to get our offer in for Caleb Williams. We're going to get our offer in for 1-1 one, one because we want to be in on that. I don't buy any of the hooey, none of it, that there's no value for Justin Fields. I've never seen anything where Justin Fields has even been on the market. Not anything that was said at the Combine, nowhere. That was the media and all of them being conglomerate in one area and listening to Ryan Poles and saying they want to do right to, by Justin Fields. And they run with their assumptions and they run with their talking heads and they say what they want and all of a sudden it turns into the snowball. If you remember right before the Combine, when my stats were shared on, on NBC Football Night in Chicago, when those were showed by Clay Harbor, people were starting to come around and say, okay, there needs to be some support for Justin Fields. The combine killed that. 
The combine killed that talking point because it wasn't popular. In fact, I was invited to be on a major show and all of a sudden that kind of went away because all of a sudden my view wasn't popular. But I haven't changed my view to be popular because I don't care about popular. I care about understanding what that guy right there is doing, Ryan Poles, because I care about the team. That's why this podcast was started, understanding narratives, understanding what the fact basis of all this is and what it means and what it relates to each other, how this all relates for fans to understand the back end, the analytical, the salary cap, the contracts, how things work and and intricate with each other in the stats, like what it all works for. So I don't care if it's popular or not. And I'll tell you guys, I get beat up on Twitter nonstop because I don't agree with Cap or I don't agree with Shefty. I don't care because they don't know anything inside of Hallis Hall. Breaking news, secret, none of them have a clue what Ryan Poles is doing. But some of us Bears fans who focus in on his interviews, on his negotiation skills, on his behavior patterns and what he does understand him better than the Shefties out there because we watch this team specifically and his behavior patterns and we understand how he works. That's why I want to share this channel with you guys. That's why this stuff right here is important. So hopefully this kicks you off to a a great Friday. You can guys can start off to a great weekend right before free agency. It's going to be really exciting to see what the Bears do. That's really going to tip a lot of things. When free agency opens up and we see what the Bears are going to do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, how that's going to work. Right now, I really do see us keying in on Xavier McKinney on the safety position. But right now, I don't know if Ryan Poles is going to go bargain shopping. I don't know if he's going to go for those big names and the highest values because Xavier McKinney is going to be demanding more value than some of the the more bargain guys. So at this point, with this Jalen Johnson signing and, and the way that contract was structured, I'm not positive what Ryan Poles is going to do for free agency other than I am 100% positive he's trading down from 1-1 with this move. He's going to trade down to extract more value in this draft because you can still get blue chip talent by trading from 1-1 to 1-2 and 1-6 and getting multiple second round picks and an additional third round pick. That's talent, especially in this draft. You can still pick up a Xavier Leggett, a Patrick Paul, a Cade Stover. You can pick up so much value. And I've said it multiple times, and it's becoming a theme. There is no one player on this team that's more important than the team or the rebuild. And that includes a quarterback. And just because you don't understand what that quarterback has done or that this quarterback, just like Ryan Poles said, is an opportunity and you have to get it right, he won't be in fear about his job by sticking with Justin Fields. He's going to make the best decisions for this team. And that is trading down from 1-1. All right, hopefully this helps. Hopefully this enlightens some things and helps you understand the salary cap and where the team sits right now. It's fun for me to see these things. I hope you guys enjoy it too. Hope you have a great weekend. And until next time, bear down.